Interrupt this program with a special report from Local 4 News. All right, Devin Skilly, Kimberly Gill, and Christy McDonald, as we continue to follow the guilty verdict against James Crumbly, uh, came in just about an hour ago in Oakland County Court, and now we're going to hear from the prosecutor. Yes, yeah, she's yes, alongside families of the victims. Let's yes. go ahead and listen in. Here's Karen McDonald. Good evening. My name is Karen McDonald, and I'm the Oakland County Prosecutor. I want to briefly uh, thank um, Mark Keast, who was our lead trial attorney. Really, he was. Um, the so many individuals in my office, the entire office for two and a half years, we had assistant prosecutors and victim advocates and investigators standing in line to help us bring justice to these families. And I am forever grateful for all of these people who work in this office and serve our county and our state because we would not be here without them. So thank you. I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Tim Willis of the Oakland County Sheriff's Office and Special Agent Brett Brandon of the ATF. They were instrumental in this prosecution and conviction. They were devoted, they were dedicated, and I couldn't ask for two more law enforcement partners that were as dedicated to victims as these two men. Most of all, I'd like to thank the mothers and fathers standing to the right and left of me. It has taken unwavering courage I will forever remain in awe of their strength and perseverance that they have shown in the last two and a half years. This verdict does not bring back their children, but it does mark a moment of accountability and will hopefully be another step to address and end and prevent gun violence. These were egregious facts in this case. These parents could have prevented this tragedy that was foreseeable with just the smallest of efforts. They could have prevented this shooting and saved these kids' lives and protected the hundreds of kids in the school that day and all of the members of the Oxford community that it devastated. With just basic, reasonable, ordinary care. This prosecution is important. The three prosecutions and convictions are critical, but we will not solve gun violence with these three prosecutions. Gun violence is the number one cause of death for children in this country, and it is a public health crisis. And we will not be able to address it until we start treating it like a public health crisis. And yes, access to guns is a critical piece of that, but it's not the only piece. We have to focus on prevention, and that's going to require us to understand and accept that it's not just one thing. It's the number one cause of death for children in this country. So I refuse to take a victory lap with these prosecutions. It will not bring back these kids. We have a lot more work to do. I've started the commission to address gun violence, and we are working towards a comprehensive approach, and we have hundreds of dedicated people in all different fields to do this. And I hope that this, this attention that you focused on this case, one, I hope it is always about victims. I hope, I hope the, the, the constant naming of these, these people and photos of them will shift to focus on the people standing here, the victims, the kids in that school, the hundreds of kids with not one mark on them that will forever be changed. Let's focus on those people. Let's focus on what we can do to prevent this from happening again. That's where we should be focusing. That's where should we should be working. That's my focus. That's my office's focus. And it will be far after I leave this office, which I'm not planning on doing anytime soon. So, And finally, I want to introduce the parents who are standing beside me. This is one small step of accountability, but they want more accountability. And I am proud to stand with them in that endeavor. I'm not gonna say their names. I'm gonna tell them who you are, tell you who they are. Madison Baldwin's mother, Tate Mears' father, Hannah's father, and Justin's father. 
they're standing here with me today, and I invite them to make remarks if they want to. Uh, but first, if if Lieutenant Tim Willis would like to make some remarks, would you like to make some remarks? No, thank you. Okay, I'm he does not want to make remarks. No, thank you. Uh, who would like to speak? Steve? Nicole? So first of all, <clears throat> I just want to thank Prosecutor McDonald and Prosecutor Keese for the, the marvelous job that they've done um, putting in the long hours, them and their team, as well as Lieutenant Willis, Agent Brandon, and the whole law enforcement team that got us to this point. But we're not done. As Ms. McDonald said, these are just the beginning steps. There is so much more that absolutely must be done. It's crazy the way that our society is currently reacting to this. Our children are dying on a daily basis in mass murders. And we do very little about it. We complain about Second Amendment rights. Or we say, oh, there's not enough money to put again for mental health issues. You, you name it, there'll, there'll be an argument against it. It's the number one killer of our kids, folks. We can put p people on the moon. We can build skyscrapers huge monuments like the Hoover Dam, and we can't keep our skills, <clears throat> our kids safe in schools. I think people just need to wake up and take action. Stop accepting the excuses. Stop buying the rhetoric. It is not a Democratic or a Republican issue. It's nonpartisan. Do not accept any excuse from any of the politicians. This needs to be solved, and it needs to be solved now. We do not want any other parents to go through what we've gone through. It's as simple as that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Buck Meir, Tate's dad, first of all, um, I want to thank Karen, and Mark, Lieutenant Willis, uh, Special Agent Brandon. Um, we met a couple folks that did some work behind the scenes. You guys obviously busted your tails and, uh, and we appreciate it. <clears throat> and um, you know, I kind of want to echo what, what Steve was saying here. Um, this, is a, this is a deep issue and it's not going to be an easy one to solve. And it's more than the gun. Our kids are not doing well these days. We're in a mental health crisis. So the gun is just a tool. So we got to look at other things other than the gun. We got to see what, what we can do to support these kids better. And that both parties should be looking at that. This is a nonpartisan issue. We need to solve this because. No parent should go through the hell we're going through. And lastly, um, you know we've we've taken care of three legs of November thirtieth, and there's still a fourth leg, and that's the school. And it's time for the school to pony up. It's time to break up that administration country club. And it's time for change. 
because we've got four kids here dead. And nobody wants to take any accountability. That needs to start tomorrow. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name's uh, Nicole Bosley, I'm Madison's mom, and I will echo what uh, Steve and Buck has mentioned. I do want to take thank the prosecution team, Karen, David, Mark, um, the advocates, everybody that worked on the case, it was, they have really been that piece that's kind of held us together and, and really pushed for us and made sure that every step we took, we kept continuing forward. Um, but what I really want to thank is the, the three families that stand with me this has been a really hard road and the friendships that I've made with these families are friendships that I wish I didn't have to make the way I did but these people are some of my best friends and I thank them more than they will ever know. Um, what I want to say mostly is yeah we have a verdict now we have a guilty verdict for both parents. We have crossed those three lines of getting accountability on that end. But right now we have a verdict. We have to execute that verdict. We have to plan for change. We have to reinforce it. This is not just a verdict for attention or media. This is a verdict that actually needs to be put to the flat platform that it is. Um, how are we going to use this verdict to actually make that change that needs? We need to start focusing on the school, the school and its failures, the things that they don't want to admit to. That's going to be our next plan for change. They are going to see these families rise up against it and we will be here fighting every second for our children because they are not allowed to forget any of them. Thank you. Good evening everybody. Uh, Craig Schilling, I'm Justin's father. Uh, I'd like to start out um, addressing Karen and the prosecuting team. Uh, thank you so much for your hard work. I, I can't thank you enough for your efforts in all of this. Um, I, I, I'm humbled to be in your presence. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm, my, my heart's beating out of my chest. I, I, I'm shaking and so nervous to be here and I appreciate all of you for your time here. And I, I, I really, can't say enough about the importance of what we just went through. Um, it's it's a monumental decision, and um, the verdict was the same. And I believe that moving forward, it's it's very important as a society uh, to set the right example for our children and future generations and come together and, and use our power of thought and our power of emotion and, and everything. We can, we can change. We can, we can push forward. We can get through the difficulties of life together if we, if we try. We can't turn our heads to these kind of problems that we face today. It's, it's so important to emphasize the necessity of going going after and, and holding those accountable accountability uh, those accountable for their uh, in it insufficiencies so to speak <laughs> um, that's that's where we're at that's, uh, we have to move forward um, we've put much behind us but there's still so much there in front of us and I I stand with everybody with these families here and with Karen 
and the prosecution and hopefully with many others to to work on that change that we need and to go that extra mile and put forth that extra effort to address these problems. I, I, I can never imagine being here and I don't ever want anybody else to have to be here like this. This is a very difficult thing to go through. But I'm happy to have the, these here, these people here helping me, and all the advocates, all the community members, everybody that has given so much and, and helped out so much. I, I thank you all, and I look forward to the future. Hopefully, it's a brighter one. Thank you. We have time for some brief questions. Karen, yes. Can you have a message to parents because of these birds? I think it's the message that every single one of us um, would have before these prosecutions started. You, you're obligated to use ordinary and reasonable care, uh, and you owe a duty to other other kids in that school, um, in the community, and you're required to exercise ordinary care. These are it's an egregious set of facts, an egregious set of facts, and um, you know I stood here two and a half years ago. Um, and, and I said, the first, this started with one question, where did he get that gun? Where did he get it? And how did he get it? And that is a question that every single one of us as mothers and fathers asked. And, and, and that's what has led to the last two and a half years. Adrian Broaddus from NBC News, thank you for your time. Really quickly, now that we have a guilty verdict, how will you use this to create change? And what message do you have to other prosecutors around the country who are looking at what happened here, the history made in Michigan? I started and, and my team started the commission to address gun violence because I just simply couldn't stomach leaving um, this endeavor with three prosecutions and then calling it a day, knowing that we have done so little as a country to address the number one cause of death for children in this country. So I implore everybody listening to this, this is preventable. And access to guns is absolutely a critical part of that. But it's not the only part. It's not the only part. Up until uh, recently, the number one cause of death for children is, was automobile accidents. And we have, we have lowered that. How? We've educated the public. We require people to, to provide car seats. We've made cars safer. We've made roads safer. We know kids, they, they, you can't get in a car without your kids saying, get, put your seatbelt on. Don't text and drive. What have we taught kids about guns? What have we taught kids about how to navigate emotional adversity? You know, programs like, like that Buck has started, like 42 Strong, where you're making connections with kids and mentoring them and reaching out way before somebody gets into the moment of crisis. And there are good models which we're going to roll out in our recommendations for threat assessment and crisis intervention. You know, we want, I, 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 I absolutely applaud these parents for saying what's true. We, one of these terrible events happens and all we're talking about is, is the shooter or the people we're prosecuting. But there's so much more. There's so much more. So that's what I'm doing. And I guess the only message I have for other prosecutors is be brave, ask tough questions. And if they don't answer, then keep trying. Because I asked the question, where did he get the gun? And that led to a lot more questions. And that led to disturbing, upsetting, and egregious facts. And I could not stand by and tell these parents the, the, what happened and what we know happened and say there's nothing I can do about it. Do you believe did the, jury that, at, did, did the jury give any indication about what, what drove it home for them? Did they tell you anything you know, that, that we can share? No, and we didn't ask. Um, I, they've worked hard. It's been a long week. They're tired. Um, so, no, they didn't. Do you believe that the, the gun storage law that we now have, that we didn't have before, do you believe that that could facilitate bringing this type of case when necessary, given that there's this new legal duty created? It wasn't in place when I charged the case, um, but I think any 
any action by our legislature or communities or schools or employers um, or organizations that recognizes that we have to use common sense um, when you're handling a deadly weapon. Um, I, you know, I grew up with guns in my home. I, 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 I don't, we, everyone has a right um, to own a gun. But with that right, of course, you, you have to secure it. Nobody with uh, looking at this rationally would say that the, 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 these, this set of facts is okay. They just wouldn't. It, um, the smallest, littlest of things could have prevented these deaths. And as, as gun owners, and, and th those are my the peers, they take that responsibility seriously. Um, but all we really require is basic, ordinary care, and it wasn't done here. Prosecutor, along saying? those lines, you ended up using that cable lock during the rebuttal. How much of a lasting impression do you think that made on the jury? It made a lasting impression on me when I when I installed that uh, lock for the first time um, and my team, we were all sitting around and um, it was it, it, it was just very upsetting when I demonstrated that and it was 10 to 12 seconds, 10 to 12 seconds. And I'm not a police officer and I, I'm not a, an expert in firearms. It's 10 to 12 seconds. And um, I, I'm not sure what, what impact it had on the jury, but it, it has an impact on me and I think any parent. And I think for sure these parents standing next to me. Any idea how many hours your team spent working on the crime lead cases? Uh, it's been two and a half years. It was um, many legal proceedings. Um, I am forever uh, just grateful and impressed with the people. By the way, there's still so many of them. I'm looking at their faces standing here, investigators, advocates, assistant prosecutors. Uh, they, you know, we're public servants. We, we, don't, we, we don't make any more money uh, because we stay late, but um, we spend a lot of time here. And I, and I probably don't focus on that enough because my first thought is this isn't hardship. This, this is hardship. This is hardship for these families. So I'm standing in front of a long line of dedicated assistant prosecutors and people in this office who do not complain. We are, we, we are, it's a privilege to do this and, and we know that it can't take the pain away, but it's one small step towards accountability. One more question. How many chances question? will see charges against any school officials? You know, we want to hold everyone accountable, but at, at this time, we, we, we just worked for two, two and a half years, um, and you were all had a had sideline view. It, um, it, it wasn't easy, so um, we're going to work with, I, I've, I've made a commitment to these parents, and I'm going to keep it. Um, and and it really doesn't matter what what letters after your name, and nobody cares about that. Uh, most of all, me. I'm I'm going to look at the facts and and work with them to get the accountability they deserve. But most importantly, they're not they're not here because they're angry. They're here because they want to prevent someone else being in that position. Thank you so much. Thank you. Karen McDonald, Oakland County prosecutor, uh, with her first comments in a long time due to the gag order around this case. But she said about the Crumbleys, they could have prevented this shooting with just basic, reasonable, ordinary care. It would seem that the jury agreed both Crumbly parents found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter. We also heard from the families who, you know, were begging for prevention to focus on that and yeah. that also means looking at other things like mental health as well.
and uh, yeah, uh, very emotional. And yep. I know they're glad that this is over. But as we heard, I, I believe it was Tate Mears' father who said, uh, "This is just the third leg of it. There's another leg." There and is, and it's school. and, and when I the see school. them standing up there, also, is they become advocates in a way that they never thought that their lives would change. Yeah. And so now, yes, looking at this next thing, we know that there is a civil case right now that is is pending against the school. Um, and and so we continue a little bit yeah. here. We do. She also said she refuses to take a victory lap tonight because there is nothing that will bring these kids back. Uh, we obviously have a lot to digest here. Uh, looking at the uh, reaction from uh, all quarters, we'll have that for you when you join us tonight on Local 4 News at 10, coming up on Local 4 Plus, and then, of course, on the broadcast side on Local 4 News at 11. For Kimberly Gill and Krista McDonald and all of us at Local 4, I'm Devin Skillian. We'll take you back now to regularly scheduled programming. For the latest information as it happens on this story, go to clickondetroit.com. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming.